I wanted to show you how I quilt with the quilts, quilt pounds and also a couple of stencils. Um, these are the two stencils that I've used in this quilt. Um, and I've already done a lot of the quilting here. But this, these templates are a bit hard to get. So if you see any at a quilt shop, I highly recommend you grab them. Okay, so first of all, I'm just going to have a look at where I'm laying it out. The pattern fits nicely at the top here if I take it from there. And that'll only cut off a tiny bit at the bottom. So I'm going to leave the stencil there and make sure it's lined up in my block nicely. The quilt pounce is just like an old duster from um, primary school. So it's filled with different coloured chalks. This one obviously is blue. You can also get them in pink and white as well. The white one's probably the best one because it will iron off so you can just use a hot iron and iron it and the chalk will disappear. But in this case I tried the pink and I couldn't see it on the fabric so I've decided to go with the blue one. What I'm going to do is just hold down um, the stencil with my hand and with my other hand I'm just going to drag the pounce across the fabric. Now you only need to do that a couple of times and then when you remove the stencil you've got a really nice dark line to follow. If I were to rub that off straight away it will disappear. If you leave it on any longer than that it will um, it will stay the blue colour um, so I'll need to in this case I'll need to wash this quilt to remove the black uh, the blue lines when I'm finished. Okay, moving on to the quilting now. I'm going to use my Sweet 16. I like to use a couple of different speeds when I'm quilting and on the Sweet 16 you can set um, speed, different speeds up so that you, if you prefer a slower speed you can set the Sweet 16 up to that slow speed or if you like different speeds for different jobs you can also change the speeds very quickly by just pressing one button. When I'm doing um, stitching in the ditch I like quite a slow speed so actually I might just show you how slow I go when I'm ditch stitching. So to start I'm just going to position the needle over where it needs to be and I'm going to tap my foot once and then tap it again and it will bring the needle up and then I can just pop my bobbin thread up like that and drag it through. Okay, then I'm going to go back to that same spot. I'm going to do a couple of stitches in the one spot just to lock those threads off. And then I'm going to go to my slow speed on the, um, on the Sweet 16. Make sure that the quilt's not catching on anything. And when I'm ditch stitching, I actually quite like to grab the quilt and pull it. So rather than using your hands and pulling like that, I like to use my hand and grab the fabric. I find that I have better control and it's smoother. But I suggest just playing around and seeing what works best for you. Now by setting the quilt on that slow speed, I can be quite careful except where I just rode up the ditch there. But I can be a lot more careful about where the stitches are going to be. And I find it much easier to stitch in the ditch. Reposition yourself regularly so that you're not trying to shift your hands while the machine's going. Okay, now I'm going to go up to the top of this stem here because I'm going to run down the, the stem of the uh, feather there. This is when I need to speed up again. Now, when I was ditch stitching, I had the, mach the Sweet 16 set on 12. I like a speed of about 10 to 15 for ditch stitching. When I'm doing um, free motion quilting, when I'm doing a stencil, so when I'm trying to trace a pattern, I like a speed of about 35. And when I'm free motion quilting, so when I don't have a plan and I'm just um, quilting away, I like a speed of about 50. So play around with your speeds and I'm sure you'll find one that's right for you. But when I'm doing long movements, I like a lot faster speed. So I usually start a little bit slower and then once the machine's going, I'll put my foot flat to the floor. And now I'm at the bottom. 
Now I'm going to work my way back up doing this, um, the feather stencil. Sometimes it can be good to work out where you're going to go before you have to go there. If I need to reposition, I prefer to stop rather than trying to move while the, the machine's going. I just find that's too inaccurate. So I prefer to stop, reposition my hands and go from there. This quilt I ditched um, before I started on the free motion quilting. I find that stabilizes the quilt before you even start and that way I'm able to grab the quilt without worrying about having puckers on the back. So I highly recommend ditching as much as you can of your quilt before you start on free motion quilting.